morning, friends. This is Meg at Chasing Retro. I hope all of you are having a wonderful, wonderful day so far. Um, today, I'm going to show you the progress on the uh, cookbook journals and binders and add a few more pages to the one that I'm currently working on. I gathered pages for all of them and I have them spread all over my dining room table. If you saw my YouTube short, you know what I'm talking about. It's quite, it's organized chaos is what it is. <laughs> um, but today I'm going to be adding pages to one of the binders that will be for sale in my shop. This is not one of the ones that is reserved. Um, and then it's just easier for me to kind of work on one at a time as far as adding pages. When I make ephemera to go inside, I make a bunch, I batch make them and then sort of distribute them evenly. But putting pages in them is really just a individual task for me. I get super confused when I try to do all of them at once. <laughs> All right, so this is the one I'm working on. It is one of the Better Homes, and it has the beautiful red and white daisies on yellow. So I made a big boo-boo. <laughs> Luckily, I caught it after only one page, but um, I was measuring these as far as how big to cut the pages as if I was measuring a regular junk journal. Um, normally, when I have a junk journal with a, a regular spine, I will hold it like this and I'll put a ruler this way and see how far out I need to make the pages come to. And of course, height is always standard. But I had forgotten, it's been a very long time since I've done a ring binder or a ring bound journal of any kind. I forgot that you can't measure from here. <laughs> you have to measure from here. <laughs> and so the first page that I had, when I shut the book, it stuck out about an inch. I was like, oh my goodness. So thankful I was putting them in one at a time instead of making a bunch and putting them in at the end. This little ring mechanism on this one is bent and I'm not sure why. <laughs> um, I, it doesn't really affect the opening and closing. Um, it just might be one of the quirks of the age of the binder. If that doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother me. Uh, one of the beauties of these is you take something that probably was destined for the trash can and you make it into something usable again. So I am going to be okay with that. If I, if my husband and I can find a way to make this lay down again without the rings separating or anything wonky, then yay. But if not, just know that I work with what I have and make the best of what I have. Okay, so here, let me show you what I've already done so far. I have seen several other people do this and I thought it was a brilliant idea. I took the original cover page and I put it inside of a sheet protector. I put it in the far bottom right corner and then I cut around it and then I sewed around the entire thing and punched holes where the original holes were. So now we have the first page of this book with the 1962 publication date preserved and it also is a good splatter guard like if you're in the kitchen and you have it open to the first page this first page is protected <laughs> um, I lined this one with a printable because I cannot find any of my 12 by 12 pages that I liked that went with the colors of this so I use some daisies here and then I will be adding some fabric pockets down here um, I have a lot of 12 by 12 papers that are in here. You'll see them here, but here's the, the deal. If I pay for a double-sided sheet of cardstock, I cannot glue one of the printed sides down onto a binder. It just feels like I'm wasting half the money I spent. So that's one of the reasons why I did a printable on the inside of this one. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> Okay, so a lot of the pages that I did, I folded like this. Um, I think the first person I saw do this was Gail Agostinelli. So she just folded the bottom three inches up. This may not be a full three, it might be two and a half. Uh, and then she made a little divot to show that it's a pocket and sewed it down. And I think that's brilliant. So a lot of the pages are gonna be like that. Some of the pages are gonna be just single. Um, this one is a farm scene from one of the paper packs 
and I just wanted this to be a single page. I don't remember who I saw do this. I've been watching so many binder journal videos, y'all. But this is just like an off cut that I sewed as a large side pocket. And I love the way this turned out. And of course, I will embellish this with some sort of image here. And then on the back, we have lemons. Uh, this is a scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby that was white on the back. And I always try to run white backed paper through the printer and I put a digital on the back. I thought this looked like a vintage tablecloth or apron. So this is just a fold out page and it's not cardstock, it's thin. Here's another page from the paper pack. <clears throat> this is the same pocket idea, but I went ahead and used the entire 12 by 12 sheet. I used my scoring board and I cut it down, uh, I think it's six and a half to five or something like that. And then I made this a fold in. So you can do that. It's, it's another way to get more real estate for your journaling. Or you can put a hidden pocket behind that. Another basic pocket page. This one, so I, it's really hard for me to think about this because I'm right-handed. I always want to put all the pockets on the right side and let the backs be blank. But you really want some variety. So this time I was sure to um, make this the back and this will be the front and so when you look at it it will look like this this one is a full page right here but then I made it so that this part flips out and then this flips down so this will be perfect for one of those ads that you get in a magazine that's really long and thin like the the large um, vintage magazines that have the ad that goes down the entire page but only half the page this way um, and I've seen someone else do this again. Nothing new is under the sun, <clears throat> taking from Ecclesiastes. I just um, made this my own. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. I woke up with, like, <clears throat> allergies. I think we've had, because we've had our windows open all week. Um, this is one of the printables that I just put in my Kofi coffee shop. Uh, the link will be below. I scanned seven or eight of my kitchen towels in my own collection and turn them into eight and a half by 11 printable digitals. And this is one of the ones, it's a tea towel that my grandma embroidered probably in the late sixties, early seventies. I love it so much. It's very threadbare, very, very faded. It's got some staining, but I love that. And so, and then I, I printed some wallpaper digital on the back. Then I have some of the original tab dividers. Now, anyone who purchases one of the actual cookbook binders, as in other words, not one of the regular cookbooks with the spine that I turned into a ring journal, you will be also receiving uh, many of the original pages and every other one, or as many as were salvageable of these. So you can still divide your cookbook by, uh, meal or dish, you know what I'm saying? You want to, if you put all of your recipes in here, just hodgepodge, you will never be able to find anything. Um, so this will allow you to still categorize your recipes. And then some of the book pages that I'm putting in here were either very thin or there was only something kitchen related on one of the two sides. So I glued some of them together, like this is from a book, a home ec book from the 19... 30s or 40s, I can't remember. And only this one side of each of these pages had kitchens. So I glued it together and then sewed around the edge. Same with this one. This was a magazine page of some ham. And then on the other side is a page from a gelatin cookbook. The back of it was not very pretty, so I just glued these two together, trimmed off the excess, and sewed. Here's another one of the kitchen towel digitals that are available in my Kofi shop. And this is just a regular digital, but man, does that not look like a piece of fabric? I thought this was so beautiful and it went so well with this. This is some more Hobby Lobby scrapbook paper that I've printed one side of. So I just did two plain sheets here. 
more Hobby Lobby paper with a printable on the back. Here are some pages from the original cookbook right here. So I picked the ones that were the most interesting. You gotta have chocolate cake, right? I mean, that's a given. And then you have a coffee bar. The meal planning ones, I love to leave these in there because honestly, this help, these things help me plan my meals. You know, making sure you have enough um, variety in your meals. Make sure you don't have too much of a starch, heavy starch meal. I love these. 15 minute supper ideas. You know, some of these are timeless. And then look at that beautiful strawberry cake with the uh, lily of the valley right there. So, um, another page will be a fold out recipe card. So I have three like this, but I have others in my stash that I'll be putting in these as well. I went ahead and punched one of the Betty Crocker recipe cards, making sure that I did, I left the words that you need to be able to make this recipe if you wish to. I just realized there's fish on there. Ooh. What kind of fish is that? Oh, it's just bread. But because it's Swedish, I bet it's some sort of pickled fish or like preserved. Okay, uh, this is some uh, shopping list envelopes that I got in Happy Meal, I think from Jenny. And they are the perfect size for these and the colors match too. So I just punched holes and that's where I stopped. This is where I have to leave off now. So we'll just punch a few and get them ready. I don't like to put them in until the very last minute because the more you turn them back and forth and back and forth, the more chance these little edges of these holes will start to get worn. And they will be worn if you use them, but I don't want to be responsible for wearing it out before you get it. <laughs> um, I did buy some hole reinforcers. They're, I have white, but I ordered some multicolored ones and they will be here tomorrow. So, for the truly brittle pages that I feel like will not stand the test of time, I will be um, doing that. So let me get my measurements again real fast. Where did they go? I lost it. Oh, right in front of my face. <clears throat> so I wanna make sure that these are going to fit okay. I bet this is too wide for six and a half. Yep, just a bit too wide. So what I could do is I could trim it or what I'm probably gonna do is turn it this way and fold it in. I just like doing that. And I'm gonna trim off this torn edge that I, this was not an easy cookbook to get things out of. It was, the uh, binding was glued, not sewn. So I had to do the best I could. All right, so here is my template. And this came from the original cookbook. This was in the very beginning. I'll probably cover this with paper and put it back in, both as a template for the new owner, but also it just kind of keeps the pages um, from getting folded weird when you close the journal. So you kind of, just like a regular journal, you kind of want to vary where you punch these because you want some pages to be at the top and some at the bottom. I've done a lot at the bottom, so I'm going to do this one at the top. Make sure it's not going to cut through any instruction words that you need. This is a tedious process, y'all, compared to just sewing everything in. But I love how versatile this makes your book, and it allows you to open it, take things out that you don't need, and add new recipes in. Because that's kind of what the purpose is, is, right? Now I just fold it. I've got my little guide down here on my cutting mat. I hope all of you are having a good week. My week has not been great. It's been a week for the books. Let's just say that. I'll be glad when it's over. Um, it's been a rough one, but it's getting better today. Today seems to be a little bit more hopeful. Just have a lot of people that I am burdened for and worried about. Just a heavy heart this week. I spent some time playing the piano this morning and that always serves to settle my spirit. It's one of the ways that I worship is just playing hymns and uh, worship songs that are taken right out of Psalms. So 
so it's important to do that. Read the Bible and then take some time to worship and focus back on things that really matter. Okay, I'm going to fold this one in again. Same thing. I'm going to go in a little bit further than six and a half just because I don't want all my pages to be the same width. This came out of the cookbook that I'm making a journal out of called Dinner in a Dish, and the colors and the illustrations in here are epic. I love them. You don't want to punch a hole too close to the edge of the page, so kind of just watch where you put <laughs> fabric everywhere. These are taking a very long time, as I knew they would, but the process has been very enjoyable, and I think I'm going to enjoy it even more once all the pages are in and I can start making the cards and tags and decorations. I think that's where I, where I will really enjoy it. Okay, this was another page from Jenny. It's a quilt block book, and this one has forks, knives, and spoons on it, which is so cute. Let's see how wide it is. Okay, it still fits. I think I'm gonna leave this little edge because it's it adds a little bit of interest. So I'm just going to fold it. Which way should I fold it? Let's fold it this way because there's not a whole lot right here. Yep, that gives us plenty of room to punch a hole. Colors in this book are fun too. Try to punch where I will mess up the least amount of words. <laughs> so one of the things that I bought because I two reasons I wanted them for I wanted some of the things for these cookbook journals, and number two, it is really the one type of ephemera that I do not have catalogs. No, I have some catalogs. I have I have a catalog for like um, electronic testing equipment, oscilloscopes and stuff like that. Um, vintage, very cool. But you know, I don't really want to put that in a cookbook journal. So I needed some house and home women's fashion catalogs and stuff like that. So I think I mentioned it in my last video, but I ordered a a lady was selling some of her mother-in-law's catalogs from the early 1960s, and I just ordered the whole lot. I think I'm going to enjoy looking through them and using them, and I'll, I will flip through them with you on video. If I don't get to do it today, it'll be tomorrow. But I think that it would be very likely for you to see some of these go to my shop if you're interested. One or two. I may be able to let go of one or two. <clears throat> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how beautiful they are when I open the box. But I would like to share some of them because they are just, you just don't come across things like this. I still have been not able to find um, like a vintage Sears or JCPenney catalog. That is on my list. And of course, for most of us, the Holy Grail would be a sewing pattern counter catalog um, that from the 50s, 60s, or 70s that will not break the bank. Now, I know I could go on eBay today and buy one for $149.95, but I mean, who in the world has the money to do that on something that's just to look at or rip pages out of? Not many people. So I will be, um, by the way, this is some wallpaper that I also received in Happy Mail. Um, isn't this fun? Jenny sent these to me and I, I love these. We have a store in town that puts their merchandise in, in them, but they are the perfect size to just punch and go. So I'm excited about that. So yeah, be on the lookout for the Vintage Catalog reveal, flip through. I don't buy a whole lot on Facebook Marketplace. In fact, I keep having to use my husband's Venmo when I do that. 
Uh, a lot of people prefer that over PayPal because I guess there's less fees. So this week after this little ordeal, he was like, I'm just going to set you up on Venmo. So I guess I am now officially cool because I have a Venmo account. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. In fact, our hairstylist even takes Venmo. Isn't that funny? What a weird world, huh? Am I done? No. <laughs> I just looked away from the pile. I was like, there's nothing in front of me. So these are sleeves out of another cookbook binder that I bought at a thrift store. It's not an old one, but they work perfectly. These are probably just the same ones that you would find in a photo album. So I just put in some of these. I found these stamped index cards at a thrift store. You were my cup of tea. And um, we're just, see, three of the holes I think already line up. Yep, three of them already line up, so we only have to punch two which is neat. Well, I, you say that, it's going to be, I think these holes are a little bit closer to the edge than what all the others are, but that's okay. This hole punch does not like punching through plastic. Yeah, I have to go back and uh, help it out a little bit. Here we go. I know, I know I could get one of those We Are Memory Keepers fancy little punches that allow you to line up the holes and stuff, but that's just one more piece of equipment, y'all. Okay, wait, I've already put a card in here, so I'm not gonna do this, at least not punch it. I might just put it in as ephemera. Let me put it in this pile. I pulled every single book page from my children's books that had something to do with kitchens or cooking or food. <laughs> this is from a reproduced Dick and Jane book. So, and we don't want to cut off the M for mother. Okay. I think having these interspersed will be, will be so cute. The other three binders only have two rings and my hands will be glad for the break because cutting five into every page is, um, where'd you go? All right, so this one, let me see. I'm a little worried about the height is okay. Yeah, the width is just a little bit. So let's trim it off a little, a little bit on the edges. This is from a book that I, I got. Um, mm, I cannot remember the name of the series right now, and I don't see it behind me. It was a book that was published in the 50s, but a lot of the original articles from their 1930s edition were just basically copied again, and that's what these are. Look at that beautiful Depression-era photograph of the mom and the little girl. You can totally tell that's a studio because that window looks fake. <laughs> It's like, it's like a painting. <clears throat> All right, let's do a little less than six and a half. This one will definitely need some reinforcing. Okay, this one's all about how to stuff apples, which I haven't done yet this fall. I love stuffed apples. I'm not a huge fruit, fruit dessert person, but one night out of every fall, I like to have a stuffed apple. Just one. No ice cream. No, 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 no. Just a stuffed apple. Right out of the oven. Yay. Okay. This is where I need to think a little bit. This is a Vogart pattern envelope, and I think I'm just going to punch it as is and... Um, Maybe put some washi here to bolster the edge because it's kind of flimsy. Someone actually cut the top tab off. But um, these are flowers and fruits in modern baskets. 
you see these types of flowers all the time when you see embroidery out and about. I, I think that's the most popular one. I don't see a lot of fruit and vegetables out and about, but I do see those flowers a lot. But I thought this would be a really, really cute large pocket type addition. I got these at Recraft, the store, the reuse store that I'm, I've told y'all about. I've told y'all too that I feel like they severely overpriced their sewing um, notions. I think I paid, because I never see these out and about, I paid either 50 cents or a dollar a piece. Now they did have the patterns inside. I took those out. So I guess, that's not a bad deal if you consider the fact that you can probably still use the pattern and make these. But um, they had some that were empty that they were still charging the same price for, and I was like, no. All right, this is already ready. It's a book page, and so beautiful retro kitchen here, but then on the back is just blank or <laughs> just words. So this would be an excellent page to put a really large, unique uh image for a tuck spot or a decoupage image of some sort. So that will go. This is from a cake cookbook. Sweet little children. Um, this one actually fits. It's perfect. It's ready to go. So about Facebook Marketplace, <clears throat> do you guys order ja Jack junk journaling supplies through Facebook Marketplace? Have you ever done that? Have you ever found anything free through Facebook Marketplace? I have. One big awesome item, and I still talk about it because it was one of my best finds ever. I got a set of five yearbooks from the 1950s for free which is simply amazing. Local to my state too, so I'm sure there's people in there that were grandparents of people I know. All right, so now I have to decide if I'm gonna cut. I think I have enough time, enough time. <laughs> Y'all, I need my second cup of coffee. <laughs> I have enough room to cut off. It's not gonna, we're only losing half the bowl of limes by doing that, so. And none of the recipes got cut off. I went to Michael's last night because I had a, a voucher from my purchase of cardstock last week. So I got a $5 voucher with my rewards. <clears throat> and I know they want you to come in there and intend to just spend your $5 voucher, but you end up spending 20. Well, last night, I did not do that. I went in there and I found an item that was $4.99. It was another paper pad. And I went to the register and the girl scanned it and then she scanned my card. And then she pushed total to give me my total and it spit out the receipt as if the transaction was done. And she looked very confused and she said, I'm sorry, can I run that again? Well, because it had already run my voucher, it wouldn't let her do it again. And we were trying to figure out what was wrong. I had pulled my wallet out because I thought I needed to pay tax. Because almost everywhere else that I've done coupons and stuff for almost the exact amount, it taxes you and then it takes the coupon off. Well, Michael's is different. Michael's took the voucher off and then added the tax. Well, after the voucher went through, I only owed one cent and their cash registers do not tax a purchase of one cent so it said that my balance or amount due was zero dollars and she got so confused my husband was able to kind of explain to her why it did that but she said in all my years of working here this has never happened <laughs> so i guess i was a uh, a learning um like a, what do you call it, a guinea pig for her. And now she knows what to do if it happens again. 
I thought that was really funny. I also felt weird like walking out with something that I literally didn't pay for. I mean, I know I did technically because I spent more money than I should have in there last week to get the voucher, but has that ever happened to y'all? Have y'all ever had a voucher that you spent just the voucher and that's it? I know it's hard because everything starts calling your name when you walk in the door, especially Christmas stuff. I am okay walking right past all the Halloween stuff. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like Halloween is getting scarier. I, I feel like I need to put blinders on when I walk through stores. It it literally bothers me. I'm like, mm -mm, not even going to look over there. Don't like it. Terrifying. If I had very young children, I would not be able to take them in those stores. They would not have liked that. So, but I'll tell you what, though. I can't pass up some Christmas, so I'm glad they didn't have Christmas out yet. Or they probably did, but it wasn't front and center. This is a divider in a old church cookbook. I love it how it looks like somebody used, um, maybe they took a calligraphy course and now they got asked to make the headers for the cookbooks. Uh, but all these are really cool ads from Ohio. So this is Ajax Lumber Company, and I'm probably gonna punch it. No, I'm gonna have to punch it on this side, aren't I? I guess I don't have to. This will just be the front. I can't decide, y'all. Should I cut this off? I think this time I will. I like to leave those little lacy edges sometimes, but this time I'm gonna cut it off. So today is Thrifty Thursday, and as you'll notice, I'm not doing a Thrifty Thursday video. Why? Because I need to stop going to thrift stores. Why? Because I have more than I will ever need. Now, will I go yard selling Saturday? Probably. Because <laughs> it's supposed to be really pretty, and there are so many yard sales popping up in my feed. But I decided to be good today and not go to the thrift store. I love this kitchen. The lighting looks a little harsh. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know what that is. Is that a dishwasher with a clear door? I don't know. I love everything about this, though. So, this will be going in for sure. You know what I miss? I'm sorry. I just... Just let me go off on a tangent for a minute. I miss when kitchens were designed this way, where if you have, like, an unused corner, an awkward corner, like, next to the fridge, they create this little cute curved cabinet with shelving and almost every house in this era had those same curved shelves next to the sink. I love that. I would put plants on it and my rings. I'd set them up there when I wash dishes. Um, we lived in a house built in the 50s for a while and when I was growing up and at the edge the counters kind of came out into the you know they were hanging from the ceiling and at the edge of it at the end of it, they had one of these round shelves and my mom loved it. She put little plants up there. I just love it. I love the way that looks. I will always be an old house girl. All right, your efficient kitchen. I haven't actually read that book. I want to know what they consider efficient. I hope I'm not um, making too many pages for these books. I really hope I'm not. <laughs> I may get to the point where I can't close it and then I'll have to make some hard deci decisions. I've been watching other people's videos who make these two to see... Um, how many pages that if they do say how many pages and y'all in these binders people are printing anywhere from like 48 pages to 80 something and I'm like how am I supposed to know I guess I'll know when to say whoa when I get to a point where it's starting to look like it won't close neatly anymore 
There's just too much good stuff. I, I swear, I have been gathering pages for these journals the longest. When I first started junk journaling, one of the things I wanted to make first was a cookbook journal for myself. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a, uh, this is a, out of Heloise Hints, or Hints by Heloise. It was like a very classic book that all ho homemakers used to buy. <clears throat> but anyway, I've been, um, and that book, I think I bought that book when my, my oldest was a baby. I used to go to this used book sale every year. It was huge. It was an old mall. And um, I'm pretty sure that's when I bought it, um, thinking that I would use it in our home. And of course, some of the some of the tips are good. Some of them are outdated and you can't buy the stuff for them anymore. But um, I've held on to, this, to it all this time and now I've decided to cut it and use it for journals. This is a napkin folding book that I found at a library sale in St. Augustine. Uh, I remember my uncle worked while he was in grad school. He worked in a really fancy restaurant somewhere in town. And um, he learned how to fold napkins. <laughs> when he would come over for family meals, he would be like, Okay, Meg, I learned a new one. Let me show you how to fold the candlestick or whatever. And he'd show me how to fold. All right, so that's the last of the pages for that one. I'm not going to uh, ramble too much more. But I just wanted to show y'all um, another boo-boo that I, that I did. But I was able to salvage it. I was given so many beautiful napkins in Happy Mail that I wanted to decoupage some envelopes. These are these are square. They're kind of um sorry, I just got a message on my phone and I thought my video had stopped. These these are about the size of CD envelopes, but they're just square envelopes. So I decoupaged some envelopes that I'll be punching and putting in. Look at this one. It's one of those Ann Tainter images in a napkin. Isn't that, isn't that fun? And then these are beautiful teacups. So I plan, I know this is blank up here, but I plan on embe embellishing this with fabric or something. But here's, here's the deal. I was not thinking straight. I laid them down like this and I put Mod Podge and I started happily doing this and then I carried them over to the kitchen and set them down to dry and came back an hour later and was like, uh-oh, y'all, the moisture from the Mod Podge had sealed all the envelopes shut. I was able to get them open, but as you can see, they ripped a little bit. This is like beginner's knowledge. I should have known that you always decoupage envelopes like this. Same thing with like tea dyeing them. When you dye them, let them dry like this. Don't let them dry like this. I just wasn't thinking so, but I was able to salvage them. I was about ready to say bad words because I was like, I am not doing this again. I was about ready to cut the back off and use this as a journaling card or something, but um, it all worked out. See, it's a little rough, but that's okay. It's good. It's all good. So that's a little tip in, in case you have not decoupaged before. Don't make that mistake that I made and I knew better, but it's all good. <clears throat> so... Um, these are coming along very nicely. I need to put them aside this weekend and work on a couple more things that I have promised other people. Um, just little, you know, custom things that someone has asked for me to put in the shop. And also, I'm, I'm also trying to finish my aunt's journal. But I will be coming back to them because they're fun and I love them. So stay tuned for more process videos and also stay tuned for the unboxing of the catalogs. If I can do that today, I will. Otherwise, it'll be tomorrow or sometime over the weekend. So y'all have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.